Alrighty. Uh, good afternoon. I hope everybody is uh, doing super well. It is a ridiculously uh, rainy, uh, what is it, Friday? <laughs> it is a ridiculously rainy Friday here, um, but we are getting stuff done because that's what we do around here. So, uh, it is, of course, time for our coaching, um, uh, midday coaching over here on the page, and I'm so glad that y'all have decided to join us. Uh, these uh, coaching videos are all, um, what do they call it? archived uh, uh, on the YouTube page, so go give us a subscribe over on YouTube, send your friends to it, tell them to subscribe, help me get to 100 subscribers on YouTube, uh, because that is truly the path to flame and glory, right? <laughs> So, uh, we've been having some really good conversations. Uh, I'm incredibly excited about what people have been responding about. And I'm not going to lie, I love coming on here uh, at new time. It really helps me frame up, uh, frame up my day, um, which is what I really, uh, you know, I really like to do. So... Uh, so yesterday I explained sort of a framework of how to understand where you are when it comes to your money, right? And I talked about incoming money and outgoing money, and we have assets and we have liabilities. And if you have questions about all of that, of course, you can go back and watch the video from yesterday it's all archived <laughs> and, to, and you can um and and really what you um it, probably before watching this video is go and look at your numbers okay um again i use a program called ynab you need a budget um, and if you want, um, if you want a link to that so that my bookkeeper can get a free month of YNAB, because <laughs> that's their referral, like their referral fee, um, you just let me know. I've given a couple of those out. Um, and so I think, so what I want to talk about today, okay, is where you are, okay, now that all of your facts straight about your incoming money and your outgoing money, your assets and your liabilities. Okay. And talking about those are like what it means, what it means for those to be neutral and what it means for those to just be a circumstance. Okay. Because I know that that's really, really challenging. And it for some, and actually I say that for some people, it's really not challenging at all. There are some people who are like, yep, it's money. I'm always, I can always go and make more of it, which is amazing. Right. And, um, I long, I'm, I am, you know, like I'm really fairly far in, in getting to that frame of mind that, that it truly is, um, just money. And what I want to tell you is, is that, you know, we make money in our mind. Um, you know, we make we make money because we make time and it is what we do with our time that accumulates our assets and accumulates our liabilities, right? Because you pay for things in an instant of time and you earn money in an instant of time or you, however the money works for you in your uh, in your life. So as we start thinking about that, I want to take you through a process today that I learned from my coach. Okay. And I want to start with a process, a, a, a concept that we work on with the kids all the time. Okay. And here's how I want to, here's how I want to set it up. Um, all right. So it's a birthday, you know, all our kids are, are, are having birthdays. Our first, our birthday season starts tomorrow uh, and Zach's turning 12. Um, and there are things for his birthday. Um, we don't have enough sugar to make a birthday cake. And so hopefully Andrew's going to be able to get sugar today for a birthday cake. Right. But kids get stuff, uh, right. They have all these instances in their life, holidays, birthdays, graduations, all the things where they get stuff. Right. And even before they're born, they get stuff. Like I remember when I was pregnant with Molly, you know, and I had two boys and I needed girl clothes. And I asked just a couple of people, hey, do you have, you know, I'm happy to take girl clothes off of your hands. I think we got nine lawn and leaf bags. So, you know, like those gigantic 
gigantic bags full of girl clothes. So, okay. And I remember being pregnant and be and like sorting all of those clothes. So many clothes. So many clothes. <laughs> right? Um, and the stuff with our kids doesn't really stop with there. The stuff in our lives never seems to stop, right? And we are out there buying more stuff, okay? And we are out there, most of us are out there trying to make more money. Um, and it all comes down to looking at the reality of the money that we have, okay? And then deciding whether or not we have the capacity to actually have that money. So I was talking with a, another consultant and I'm going to be, there's a podcast uh, recording that's going to be coming out about this. And this other consultant um, has for, his name's uh, um, Larry, what is Larry's last name? Um, I'll go find, I'll go find it, but he's on, he's on my podcast and he has, um, he has four stages of accepting reality. And the first one is denying reality. And the second one is resisting reality, right? And then the third one is actually accepting reality. And then the fourth stage is changing that or doing something with it. And I think as I've been thinking about that, um, we have, I have, been, I've been thinking about that with respect to my money and what I'm gonna teach today and all of that sort of stuff. And, and it's the same thing with stuff because right after I talked to him, I talked to a woman who organizes for a living because um, that's an issue in manufacturing plants is putting all your stuff away. Um, and we don't have the capacity, many of us just don't have the capacity to have the money that we have, have the debt that we have, have the things that the debt bought, right? I mean, how many of us are in an ever loving battle with our house, right? And our house, we by and large approach our house as a pile of work on the ground we need to put time money and effort into i mean i think that there are a lot of us who approach our house that way and when we get sick of it we change circumstances and we pick up and we move <laughs> right and so i think that when we when we think about those stages of reality i want you to ask yourself a question as to whether or not you actually did the work of going out and finding out what's in your checking account what's in your savings account if you're doing the work of budgeting, whether you're using Mint or YNAB or a profit and loss document or whatever, whatever it is that you might be, might be using, okay? Not figuring out what your reality is, is denying your reality, right? And saying, I'm just not gonna go look at it. Like, mm, not it, I'm gonna put my finger on my nose and I'm gonna say, not it. That's that's denying that the reality exists, okay? Then there is a stage of resisting the reality of your money, okay? And so when you're in resistance about your money, you are checking your bank statements, you are going in, okay? But you are not balancing your budget, Okay, and your outflows are more than your inflows and you're going into debt. And I think that is, there's a great number of people for historically a very long time that have been in a great amount of resistance about their money. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that, um, that, that, that money is energy and if you think abundant thoughts, you will all of a sudden have abundant money because I don't think it works that way. I think we have a thought, feel, act cycle. I think that if you decide you want more money and you come from um, a thought that feels good for you around that, I think you can do the actions to go out and get more money. And I think that is how it works because that's what I've seen in my life. I just did end of, end of month books with my bookkeeper yesterday, <laughs> right? And I've, um, and, and I haven't manifested abundance through saying, you know, I'm manifesting abundance. I'm not, I'm changing my thoughts. I'm creating feelings that allow actions that go create more massive profit for me. <laughs> That's how that works, <laughs> right? And so, but I'm able to do that because I stopped resisting my money and I stopped resisting the conversation 
Um, and I am finding new people within, within whom to have conversations with. Um, so that is all part of a set of actions that come entirely new thoughts about money. But we, I can't have entirely new thoughts about money until I realize how I'm dealing with my money in the right now, uh, right? And so that is the acceptance, okay? This stuff doesn't happen overnight. And I don't, you know, just because I presented it yesterday doesn't mean you're going to be able to do this today. I've done all of this work over the past six, eight months, right? And, and so I don't want you to feel like, oh my God, I didn't do the homework yesterday and now I'm not going to be able to do it today. What I would say is, is just recognize in that denial, resistance, acceptance, um, and then finally impact, uh, you know, and, and, um, creating new possibilities with your money. Just where are you on that scale? Go back and look, and you may be at different spots in your, in your incoming money and your outgoing money. Like I know I had a very different conversation about debt um, versus incoming money that I had to tease apart. And I was in denial about debt, sure. Um, and then I was in resistance about debt. And I know this all sounds very 12 steppy, but you know, they have a lot of good things to say and have helped a lot of people. And the and and how this all ties into over desire, because that's really the theme of the week is a lot of us really have an over desire for money because we think money is gonna solve our problems and money never solves our problems. A thing can never solve our problems any more than another Nerf gun and more Nerf bullets, Jesus with the Nerf bullets, um, is gonna solve my boy's problem. My, it doesn't solve their problem of boredom because I assure you they can be bored and we can have, I don't even know how many Nerf guns we have in the house. Right, and they can still be bored. <laughs> so it's never the stuff, it's never the thing, it's never the money that's gonna solve your problems. And we know this from empirical research. I mean, go look at people who have won the lottery. Uh, like their social attainment measures are always lower on, for almost all of them. Now those of, who, those of them who were like in a good mental state before they won the lottery, they're fine after they won the lottery, but that's because they were fine before they won the lottery, right? Money and more money does not make our problems go away. Money reveals who we are and how we react to the universe. And as I am always asking around here, who do you want to be and how do you want to be in relationship to your money? And one of the questions to start looking at in that scale is, is do you have an over desire for money? Because a lot of that comes from a real sense of lack. But that sense of lack is, is all, I want it, is all in your head, I want to say, but it's because it's your thoughts. I mean, saying it's all in your head is pretty pejorative, right? It is in your thoughts, okay? And those thoughts can change, but those thoughts aren't going to change until you figure out just where the heck you are right now, all right? And the feelings that they bring up, those thoughts bring up, are not going to kill you, okay? And I know debt, I assure you, I know how burdensome debt can feel, Right, but what does it look like to have a different relationship with your debt, okay? And I'm not just talking about how we have good debt and bad debt. There is no good debt or bad debt, except how we think about it, right? Debt is a contractual relationship well, between you and somebody else, what, no matter how that, contract was written down, right? <laughs> and so the way that you think about it is entirely dependent upon you, okay? And so when we think about the various kinds of debt that I like drew out yesterday, so that was outgoing money, we have short-term debt, we have long-term debt, and hopefully where we are decreasing short-term debt as we can and decreasing long-term debt as we can, because there are many of us who are um, much more comfortable with no debt. And I am one of those people. I'm working really hard to pay off all of my debt. 
Uh, but that's not everybody, okay? And that's what I mean about money being a circumstance. We can all think different thoughts about money, the money that comes in and the money that goes out. All right, and so the exercise that I wanna take you through, once you've decided that, that, you, um, that, that money is neutral, this exercise is going to help you develop the capacity to have the money that you have and the capacity to have the debt that you have because it's all the same thing. And at the end of the day, for most of us, it's like ones and zeros, right? It's ones and zeros that we have agreed means something, but it's because we've agreed it means something, right? And so what does that look like? So what I want you to do, I want you to do an exercise, okay? And I want you to look at the number that you wrote down, incoming money, outgoing money, whichever one you want, short-term, long-term. I want you to find the one that has the like least emotion attached to it, <laughs> all right? Let's start with the easy stuff. <laughs> start with the, the, the stuff that has the least emotion attached to it, okay? And I want you to write that number out on a piece of paper, okay? So I live and die by post-it notes, okay? So find yourself a post-it note, okay? I want you to just write one of the numbers and I'm just gonna do an example, okay? So this is $100, all right? And I want you to write the $100 on a piece of paper in front of you, okay? Or whatever number you want, $1,000, $10,000, okay? I'm not talking about manifesting money, people. I'm talking about money you already have, <laughs> right? Or debt you already have. Unlikely that's the least um, uh, uh, emotionally charged money number in your life, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to look at this number, okay? And I want you to look at that number, all right? And just see the number. And I want you to see all of the thoughts that come up with that number, okay? And it's gonna be thoughts about what bank account that number sits in, or whether it's like a pile of cash sitting in front of you, all right? And what thoughts come up about that number, the, the bank account that it is, that it is in, um, what it was, what you think it will be, right? How you earned that money, okay? And I want you to start picturing that money like as a, as a pile of cash, okay? Or as, you know, if you have, if you can picture, you know, ones and zeros sitting in a bank account, all right? And just picture that, all right? And breathe into that number. And I want you to start looking to lose the language and just see that number as a picture. See the, the, the dollar bills or the $20 bills or the $100 bills, like whatever it is. I just want you to see it as a picture, okay? and lose the language. Because when we look at things as pictures in our mind, it accesses a completely different part of our brain other than our language and processing centers. Okay, and that's very important for this exercise. And I want you to recognize the feelings that are coming up in your body. Is your stomach tightening? Are your shoulders going up by your ears? Are you like, does your throat constrict and close? Right, and just notice the thoughts that are creating those feelings, right? And I want you to notice that nothing bad is happening to you right now. You are sitting here, probably in a chair, sitting in bed. I know a lot of you listen to these at the end of the day, right? And nothing, literally nothing bad is happening to you right now. Nothing bad at all is happening to you right now, okay? And I want you to just think of that number as a picture, okay? And then I want you to slowly just let the picture dissolve and, and, and watch as all of those sentences dissolve. All of the language around your circumstance will dissolve. I do this exercise all the time, right? And then you know it is all dissolved when you are at peace and totally neutral, just completely neutral right? And you'll start getting there when you have some positive thoughts 
and you have some negative thoughts, right? And you're able to swing back and forth between the positive thoughts and the negative thoughts, right? And then you're just gonna be in neutral. And you can actually do this exercise with absolutely anything. You can do it with a computer or the phone sitting in front of you and have your stuff and your money be neutral, right? Because it is. It's completely neutral. The only reason it means something is because we've signed meaning to it, right? And then once your stuff is all neutral, that is where you are sitting in a capacity to have, and you have reached that third level of reality, which is acceptance. You have acceptance around uh, the number that you are looking at, uh, right? And I just want you to notice how much better that feels than the self-castigation or the it's not enough or it's too much or whatever it is. Because from this point, when you have the capacity to have the money that you have and you practice it, okay? This is not something that you are gonna develop overnight, <laughs> right? There's a reason I do this for two hours every day. When you have that capacity to have that stuff which you have, okay, and right now that exercise that we just did, you're developing the capacity to have the money that you have. Doesn't that feel amazing? Like just develop that, I mean, imagine what you could do in the world if you developed the capacity to have the money that you have. If we had a world that lived like that, like we'd be having entirely different conversations about economics. So, so when you develop that capacity to have, then you can ask yourself a couple of different questions, okay? You can ask yourself from that place of neutrality, what do you want, so, right? What do you want? You have $100 and your $100 doesn't mean anything. What do you want? Do you wanna grow it? Do you want to shrink it because it's a debt? Do you want to, what do you want? Do you want to let it sit there and accrue interest? I guess that's growing it, <laughs> right? Do you want to in, in, invest it and turn it into something else? What do you, what do you want to do, okay? You could also ask yourself, how do you want to act with that money? That'll reveal to you what you want, right? If you are in a place of neutrality, what if you asked yourself, how do I want to feel? If I turned in and looked at the truth of my feelings, how do I want to feel about my money? Do I want to feel abundant and wealthy? Do I want to feel free and open? Like, just what do you want to feel? <laughs> Okay, because you can decide what you want to feel about your money. Uh, you absolutely can decide this. Um, when you're in a space of like, what do you want to feel? You're going to find yourself building evidence, so, right? Do you want to build evidence that money is easy or do you want to build evidence that money is hard? If you are in a place where you want to grow in your money, there are a lot of people who will tell you money is easy is a great place to get to. Okay, um, and you get to decide what that is because ultimately you will get to figure out what result you want to create with your money. Okay, and that's what that's where the freedom lies is when you say, "Here's the results I want to create. I want to create the results of no family debt. I want to create the results of owning my own house. I want to create the results of." $2 million per person in retirement in my family. I want to create the result of paying for my kids' college. I don't want to create the results of paying for my kids' college. Like, whatever results you want to create, when you come from a space of neutrality around your money, you can declare what results you want to create in the universe and you can go out and create them. I have news for you. That's true about absolutely everything, right? And for those of you, if you want to like dive into this this weekend, I highly recommend doing the Marie Kondo method. Just pick a surface and do the Marie Kondo method because it's the same thing, right? I mean, she starts out with thanking your stuff or whatever it is is in front of you 
right? And the question, does this spark joy, is designed to help you understand where are you in relation to that stuff? What is the conversation that you had, right? And if it does spark joy or it doesn't spark joy or whatever it is, you can just look at the thing, okay? Look at your cell phone, look at the thing and dive into the capacity to have whatever that thing is without changing it, without getting rid of it, without, you know, like without keeping it, without just let it be right there in front of you and see if you can't with the stuff that just doesn't bring up a whole lot of emotion. Practice with that if the money exercise was a little too hard. All you're doing is developing the capability to have the stuff that you have in your life. And when you have that capability, you'll be able to do whatever it is that you want. You'll be able to make the decisions from a place of openness and freedom and choice. And not some Hobbesian choice where you have no other choice, but from a place of really truly being able to choose. And the path to feeling better is understanding that you can choose the things that you have in your life and you can continually choose them, right? Andrew and I have been married for, uh, what year was it, 20, 20, got married in 20, so 14 years and three weeks, right? And we're married because we continually choose each other. The people I work with who are business partners continually choose each other. That's, you can choose the stuff that you have. And what does that look like, okay? And creating the life that you want is all about understanding the overlap between what you have and what you want. Because there are some things that we have that we don't want. There are many things that we have that we do want that we spend no time wanting, <laughs> right? Like we spend no time wanting. And that can be like, that. that's where my kids are all the time with their stuff. I mean, dude, they wanted those Nerf guns. Oh my God, they want the Nerf guns. They want the D&D &D stuff. They want the magic cards. They want the, the la, 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 and then they have it. And they spend no time wanting it once they have it. Because what do we say? The wanting is always better than the getting. But we can change that actually. And we can have the having be wonderful. So what this weekend are you willing to have the capacity to have in your life? What are you willing to let go of and let go into and have it be neutral? And start with the stuff in your life if you can't start with the money, all right? If you're okay with the stuff in your life, then let's dive on into money. All right, that's what I have for you this afternoon. I got an afternoon full of phone calls with some really awesome, exciting work. You are all amazing, beautiful people. I love you so much. Thanks so much for joining me. And I will see you again at noon tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.